Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, welcome to my bedroom and quarantine. Woo! My bedroom and quarantine with kids below. So, um, thank you for being here. Uh, so, this is, I'm Stephanie Hurd with Revive for uh, women and really the purpose of this little chat is the purpose of Revive for Women actually is inspiration and gatherings for women to revive their purpose, passion, uh, connection, and best self. And right now we can't really connect very well. And so I just think these little online chats of visiting with people that we admire online, like you, and just finding out um, awesome. finding out fun things about you. Um, and insightful things about you will be totally beneficial. So you are Rock the Mom Jeans. Which I love your your title, your name. Tell us about that. So have you heard the 80s song, Rock the Casbah? No. And I should know. Oh, it's by, um, let me pull it up because I cannot remember off the top of my head who sings it. It's, you know, like, Oh heavens. That is so funny. No, I heard that. Um, it is by The Clash. Oh, okay. There's a song called Rock the Casbah by The Clash, and it um, has this funny little. Can you hear it? Yep. So it's one of those songs that has like all those lyrics, and it's, it's like. Like, <laughs> you cannot understand them anyway but the the chorus is rock the casbah and most people do not know what they're saying when they say casbah because that's not a word what is casbah i don't know right? no actually i do i i believe it's well now i want to look it up because i used to know it off the top of my head anyway because uh so long ago, <laughs> I was on Instagram. Okay. I had two children. One of them was under one and Instagram was brand new. And I was finding out that all these women had beautiful homes, dresses, makeup. Yeah. And I thought, wow, my life does not look like that. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of playing the comparison game. Um, and so... I, I kind of did this like satirical 180 of, oh, I see your Valentino shoes. They are beautiful. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> with. Here's the baby spit up down my shirt and my sweatpants that I've been wearing for four days. Ooh, go and on, I baby. just wanted to really show what, uh, I just wanted to show what motherhood was really like. By the way, a casbah is a central part of a town or a citadel. Casbah okay. is an actual thing, but it's, I mean, it's not how religious. did I not remember that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, I love eighties music and I think I was just listening to eighties a lot at the time. It was like Pandora was brand new and Instagram was brand new. This was 2011. Yeah. Maybe Pandora wasn't brand new, but it was brand new to me. Yeah. And I just was like, all right, I got to rock something. And what am I rocking? And the other thing was, uh, when we were in high school, mom jeans were abhorrent. They were the worst thing you could possibly own. Like the lower, the better yeah. on your jeans, the teeniest little zipper, like you didn't even need a zipper, right? Like you just <laughs> needed a button and a whale tail out the back. Like, Give me it up. It yeah. was, oh. Yeah. So then I figured out that, oh no, mom jeans are actually there for a reason. They hold up all your mommy bod yes. and they're amazing. And I'm tucking in, I'm tucking it in kids, right now. <laughs> all the cool kids now are wearing mom jeans and it's all about butt cheeks and eyebrows, which were like not the cool thing. No. Then. Anyway. Yeah. So, so funny. I kind of took this like as it was just an Instagram account that was something fun to do, a little bit of a hobby. And I started connecting with women like mm -hmm. all over the U S because I was talking about, um, my postpartum journey. I was talking about real parts of motherhood. I was talking mm -hmm. about my mental health. Uh, I through, through this last couple of years, um, my son was diagnosed with ADHD, which also 
kind of put a mirror on me and I was diagnosed with ADHD and was really interesting because on a metabolic level, ADHD is a dopamine deficiency. Mm -hmm. So when people are like using caffeine to self-medicate or sugar to self-medicate, um, whereas like depression is a serotonin deficiency, I was being treated with serotonin, which is not what I needed. I needed dopamine. So just finding out that like, oh, if something's, if something's wrong, you know, it's not wrong. It's just something's off metabolically. Yeah. So whether it's your hormones or whether it's, um, you know, like the communication skills anyway. So I just feel like it's a really good place to, um, just be myself. And I show up as my authentic greasy Love hair it. or makeup to the nines, you know, self, like this is me today. And this is what it is. And motherhood looks different every single day. Yeah. And whatever it is that you're doing, at least you're trying and at least you're doing something. And so don't beat yourself up for the things that maybe someone else accomplished today, but you didn't because uh -huh. if you accomplish sitting on the couch and nursing a baby and keeping it together and yeah. feeding your toddler, that is success. That is huge. The babies are alive. That was like, the babies are alive. that was my level totally. of success for several years of like, okay, I'm alive. They're alive. Okay. Nothing else has we to did. happen. Yeah. But the problem is, but the problem is you can tell yourself that, but do you really believe it? Because I had a hard time believing it. Um, and I had postpartum depression and stuff like that. And so the, the guilt factor and the expectations, I think of like, what am I, how am I fulfilling this purpose? Like, you know, the confusion there. So did you honestly, when you were telling yourself, Hey, I'm good. Did you believe that? Or was it like you were aspiring to believe that? You know, I, I think I was born with this overabundance of self-confidence. That's awesome. <laughs> um, well, okay. and you think that until you look back at pictures and you're like, oh, ooh, I really wish someone would have told me like, actually, no, that's that better. was not working for you. <laughs> but I just keep blazing my own trail and I'm like, all right, well, I don't, I don't fit the mold. I don't look the mold, you know, as far as the mold, like I'm six, I don't know if you knew this, I'm six two. I knew you were and over six feet. Yeah. I'm six two. And so I have never ever fit into a pair of jeans walking into a regular store and trying on a pair of jeans. Like never. I've even gone to like oh, specialty shops that are like, our jeans are so, no, they're so long. Oh my gosh. You have to try these. I'm like, okay. Okay. I'll try them on. And I try them on and I try really hard to like be nice. And it's so hard for me to be nice because I'm like, you are not listening to me. Like you do not see me. My legs go up to your armpits. <laughs> they are actually, my inseam is 37 and a half inches long. Like wow. I don't look like you. I don't look like you. I, so anyway, hallelujah for online shopping because right? I can actually put on pants now. Leggings. <laughs> or it was like, I could go to, you know, three stores and you know, it's money doesn't fall from the sky. I didn't grow up. Um, I didn't grow up wanting, but I also was very aware of like what was on trend and what was, what I was wearing was most likely not. On. So anyway, I just like this, look, my life doesn't look like the perfect life. And so whatever you're doing, as long as you're doing something like yeah. that is beneficial. I agree. I totally agree. I appreciate that. Um, you getting little people. Little, yes. Little back. Like, I know. Me too. So no, I'm not going to open the door. It's my turn right now. <laughs> I want to ask. Um, so then did, what was your purpose? What were your passions then? Cause that's my big thing is like how purpose and passions evolve throughout our, our lives and our momhood. Yeah. Yes. I'll send my phone out of there. I'm <laughs> pacifying my child with my Pacify phone. your child. One minute. <laughs> right now. There you go. Picking up phone. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Did you hear his little man voice? Mom, you send your phone out right now. <laughs> I live in this I live in this world of men too. I know you like, do. I have all brothers. I have all boys. Four boys. Uh, That's so a lot of boys. My passion. Yeah. Four four little boys. Yeah. My oldest is 10, down to he'll be four next month. Um, so my passions at the time that I started this Instagram account, okay. 
you hold on hold on are you muted can you hear me yes okay you muted for a moment go ahead i can hear you now so um back at the time that i started my instagram account my passions were getting my body back you know trying to go back to that normal of yeah. what I thought my life was supposed to be, right? When when you're doing something totally new that you've never done before, it's our brains try to make it as comfortable as it possibly could be. And that's usually to reverting to an old habit. So like yes. I was working out, I was um I was wearing my same old clothes and all the things. And so it initially started out as a like fashion blog without the blog. I just I didn't want to I didn't want to post about stuff. I mean, I wanted to post about stuff, but they didn't want to like write up a, I didn't want to blog. Anyway, it's kind of morphed because of the connections that I've met with women talking about mental health, talking about hormones and whatnot. Um, I, I loved at the time, I, I mean, I still do. I don't have as much time to do it now, but um, I was quilting a lot. I was selling oh, okay. baby quilts. I had a shop uh, called Brown Eyed Quilts. It's still, oh. it's still there. It's pretty dusty, but I don't, you know, I, no one actually wanted to buy my baby book. Um, and then I threw a dance party with some friends and we did it as a charity event. And that was in 2015 and 2016 after I had my third and fourth boy. And then um, uh, you broke for a second. So I was just making you sure. You did too. No, I can hear you. Keep going. Okay. Um, so we threw a charity event dance party and then uh, and then everyone had another baby after our last one in 2016 and I really missed that like creating that community of women a place for women to come together and I thought you know what everybody really needs is a good night's sleep and so I started doing it at hotels where you can come to the party and then you can go upstairs and go to sleep and no one's going to come and say mom I threw up in the night because right with you. <laughs> and you can sleep in oh my gosh you can sleep in yes or our last one we had yoga mm -hmm. at uh 8 30 in the morning and then we did spray tans after and it was <laughs> so much fun to just yeah like that like post-party glow like take it with you here's a spray tan yeah. and it was really fun to get some businesses involved i had um amy uh she's got amalu mascara artist she's uh she did makeovers and I had um a gal named Tessa there and like there were mommy makeovers and got beauty came and did nails for people and it was just a party. It that sounds totally so party. good. That sounds so, so good. So I would love to start, you know, I want to bring one to a city near you. Like that's the goal. Like I want this to be something that women look forward to that they're like, oh I I mean because speaking from my own experience I know out there, there's an extrovert who doesn't have the support system of a bunch of sisters. Yep. Oh. Hold on. It says your bandwidth is kind of um, low, just so you know. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Oh. Okay, it said your bandwidth is kind of low. I think your son is hacking into your internet. But anyway, go on. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure everyone's doing that. We've got like, You're fine. Devices. You're fine. I can hear you now. Anyway, um, like I want a girl's trip. I want to go do a girl's trip, but I don't necessarily have, I, I do have friends that I could go with, but I'm thinking about the person who's out there who doesn't and who might not really have the whole they might not have somewhere to go. They might not really want to go, you know, travel too far, what not. It's like me bringing a girl's weekend to you without you having to plan it. I love it. Sounds really great to me. <laughs> sounds like, perfect. Yeah, I signed up for that. <laughs> well, and I think, was it you that um, some of the women were going, because I saw you, you put one on, because you're in Utah, I'm in Oregon. And actually, I'm just going to, we do have some people trying to get on. So I just want to refresh that. Um, this is Rock the Mom Jeans, Elizabeth Olson. I have, that's why I grabbed my phone. I have people trying to ask what the, um, what the password is. So um, anyway, there we go. And we're talking about, no, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about uh, 
your purpose and passions and your the way you connect with women and how you're just trying to live your best life because we all do it differently but and i'm not here to compare other women i'm here to like present hey first of all you're not alone in, in feeling these struggles and secondly these are some ideas that have worked for her or for her and take what you want from that and see if it benefits you and so um, I saw your masquerade dance a couple months ago. Oh my gosh, I love to dress up. Like that Halloween is my favorite holiday. People think I'm like horrible because it's true. And like masquerade, I have all that stuff. I love it. And I was just like, oh, I would so be there. Um, but I saw some of those women, weren't they showing up by themselves even? Did you have some that came alone? And I think that is fantastic. That takes a lot of guts. And that takes a lot of like, you know what? I need this. That is self-care, how to identify, this is what I need, I'm not getting it, so I'm going to go there and trust that the other women are going to be so excited just to be there that we're going to bond. I love that. And yeah, it's like a, a women's weekend by yourself or with other friends already made for you. So, yeah. go ahead. It, it makes me, when I think about like where this came from, because I had, you know, like when I tell people, oh, I throw dance parties for women, some people are like, oh that's so cute and I think you were not in my heart and in my head when I had this idea this idea came like a tsunami I mean it completely took me over and I had the most overwhelming crying experience where I was thinking about these women who are in their homes they are feeling so lonely and they are feeling so discouraged that there's not really anything for them to look forward to, right. whether it's because of budget reasons, whether it's because of, you know, like geographical reasons or religious reasons. Like, I just want this to be something where they come and they may or may not find a best friend, but at least they can come to a place where they've got that. It's, it's a place of energy. It's a place of acceptance and just, come and be with us and party with us and we're just glad you're here i'm glad you're there because i can throw a party but it's not a party without people i totally agree i love it um so tell me tell me do you guys the women that come there are they um are they kind of like they're they're associating with you online beforehand or what kind of do you feel like what does it do for them that one night away? What do you see the transformation of they anticipate and they arrive and they have it and then they leave? Tell me, how does that, how does it seem like it feels for them and how does that make you feel? Um, so I've had a couple experiences where I've had some women who are like, oh yeah, that sounds like a fun idea. Uh -huh. um, and then they come and then they leave and it's just kind of in and out for them. Okay. Um, I've also had some women who have uh they have like oh i need that so bad i am driving i've had i've had women drive over an hour nice. just to come to the party and and they didn't stay the night and they were like this was the best thing ever i cannot believe that i got to do this i mean uh. I had leave kids who had tonsils out like that <laughs> they needed they needed it so bad they were like okay, my kids are taken care of, they've got their medication, like I've got everything set up, Yeah, I need to go and just go and get that. I've had women oh, good. and they, they ended up staying the night with a stranger, not like stay the night with a stranger, but one woman had an empty room Yeah, and she said, I've got this big room, I didn't know anyone, but I booked a room and if anyone needs to come stay with me, you should. And love it. two women lived in two different locations. They were best friends, but they met in Salt Lake. Uh -huh. And they were just sitting in the hotel lobby. And I said, you come, come with me. And they ended up staying the night. And they now have a, a new best friend. And it was just so cool. Oh, my gosh. Connections. Um, I also had a woman come um, who was having a lot of confusion in her marriage and was connecting um, some behaviors with uh, their religion and ended up staying the night with a friend, talking it out, just kind of vetting things out. She had, she didn't, she wasn't really in a place where she could um, get to like therapy or see a counselor, or, you know, and, and she was able to see that actually this is, this behavior is 
to, you know, to be able to isolate the behavior yeah. as opposed to like the um, association and yeah. just to kind of pick things apart and have that time. Women need women. Yes. That is, that is hands down um, something I go back to, you know, men, when they, when they need to recharge, they kind of go out and they spread, they do like the hunting thing, the, you know, the gathering. By themselves I mean, usually. Doctor caveman days right and the women went to the fire or they went to the they went to the watering hole and they went and you know gathered together and they would talk things out um you think about important events in a woman's life like no woman should have to get go through go through any type of trauma alone right whether it be birth whether it be a death whether it be um you know an issue with a child and they often need to talk more about it yes. than a one hour session or time that in my experience, the man in their life can yes. handle. Yes, absolutely. And so, and so just bringing that connection of women together, I think is just really eye opening and liberating. And it just empowers us to feel like, oh, I, I am woman and I can do things and yeah. I don't need permission. Sometimes we as women look for permission. We don't need permission, permission to permission to cut our hair, permission to wear a certain style, permission to say certain to things do. or think certain certain things. Yeah. yeah. And we don't need permission. So you know what? Feeling like I need to go to a dance party. You probably do. <laughs> yeah. For the women who need permission. I give you permission, right? We give yeah. those who need permission, permission to give your, to, you own yourself, do what you need. Yeah. I think the dance parties and the whole principle of women connecting on a fun, because um, connection can be really light, it can be really deep, and we need both. And especially in momhood, when we're weighed down so much with these huge things to go and to just let loose and, and feel attractive. Because I know part of your thing is they get to get dolled up if they want, which is so fun. Um, but my question is, that is fantastic. I love it. But we can't do that all the time. So what, is, what are some things that you do every day for yourself for self-care? What does Elizabeth need to help Elizabeth feel like a woman and not just a mom and everything else to everybody except for yourself? So I've actually gotten really good at, at uh, those practices because I am the only woman in my home. Uh -huh. right? So the time that it takes me to do my hair, even if I don't actually do my hair, I do take the time, wash my face every single night. I wash my face. I brush my teeth. I floss my teeth. I take out my contacts. I put in my retainers. Like I look like I'm 15, but every single night that is my number one non-negotiable all my other ones that i like to get a workout every day uh -huh. um i'm i'm not a morning routine person i do morning routine items i might do them throughout the day this morning i woke up and i ran and then i listened to an uplifting talk and then i had a good breakfast so that is like mind body soul you know i do right. those things today um does that happen every single day no some days I sleep in and that mm -hmm. is like, oh, I got my beauty sleep and I feel yeah. so much better. Um, so I do like to, I like to put myself together a little bit more. Not that I feel like I'm not, I don't like saying that, you know, you have to wear makeup or you have to do something because I don't feel that way. And oftentimes I will go places without makeup or like if if you ever see me on instagram you will know <laughs> i'm not always hair makeup right. shower dress worked out like i'm not but when i do do those things i am taking the time to take care of myself and i have decided that you know if i don't do it for me who is going to do it for me no exactly there is no one Exactly. Well, and I've been on the phone with you even just now, but a different time when you were like, this is mom's time. This is my time. And you didn't lose it, but you know, with your child, but you were very clear, Hey, this is my time. And that's what I say to in the morning. This is my time. You might be up also, but you're not going to be in here while I do my stuff because 
I need to feed myself this way before I can give to you. And having those, um, that time and whether it's in the evening, whatever it looks like for you, to have that time to yourself of like, guys, this is mom's time. I don't, whether it's five minutes or a half hour, whatever you can carve out that is working for you. If it's not working for you, you got to carve out more. And your family has been really good for my boys to have that boundary. Like I put up a boundary and I have, I've been really good at saying, no, this is actually my time. Because if you don't respect your own boundaries for yourself, they are definitely not going to respect. Exactly. So um, I actually did a life coaching program last year and, and um, she asked me, you know, what are your non-negotiables? And I thought, oh. I don't have a single one. And I was mm-hmm. doing a lot of giving, 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 yes. like, Hey, can we need you to come do this? I need you to come do this. I need you to, you know, and it wasn't just my husband asking me or my kids asking me, like, it was just people, things. Yeah. Anyway, a phrase that I learned is, I'm sorry, I cannot do that right now. Yeah. And that's not a mean thing to say. That's mm-hmm. not, I'm better than you. I no. don't care. You know, like, Honestly, if your diaper needs to be changed, great. But if I'm going to the bathroom right now, I'm not <laughs> going to stop. Think right. about that. Like, it can wait. It can wait. It's, it's yeah. nothing. It can wait. Yeah. So it can I wait, but has been... I was going to say, it, certain things can wait, but you as a woman can't wait at times. And we need to remember that. We don't have to wait and we shouldn't have to wait. At times, um, yes, maybe reading that book can wait, but get to it later. Make sure you get to yourself. Um, And I think personally, like the kids can wait more than we usually make them personally. Or you can have your earphones in and you're listening to a book while you're cooking dinner. Exactly, yes. Or listening to them. (laughs) Okay, let's wrap up. But you have such good things to say. I love it. Um, what would be the final um, advice or a challenge that has really helped you that you want to pass on to the, to women? So I really would love to speak to the woman who's listening to this, who's thinking like, how do I find myself again? Yes. Um, and I would say, write, get a notebook and write not a journal for your kids to read later not a not even anything that you have that you have to read later now some people rip it up throw it out like it's beneficial to them but seeing your own progress of where you've gone where you've come from or noticing that like you're feeling low around the 20th every single month yeah right Write and write and write and write. That is the one way that you can find what is really insight. Truly you. I love it. It doesn't matter what everyone else is doing or however anyone is talking or decorating their home or wearing clothes. What you write is your own true self. And when you find your own true self, if you don't like her, you're in trouble. So, so figure out, are you just complaining all the time? Like start being grateful. Are you just wishing that something else was happening? Like, I wish, I wish my kids were at school so I could, what? Well, do that first, get up and go work out and then you can take care of your kids. Like, yeah, I don't know. I would say, write, write and write and write. I love that. I love it. With the mentality that nobody else is going to read this to be really, really honest. I love that. Thank you. That's, I'm going to do that because I write in my journal, but to actually just write for myself, I'm totally going to do that. So real fast, it is so good. I I love the idea of it. Um, I mentioned your rock the mom jeans on Instagram. You have a website also rock the mom jeans and dance parties will be coming our way, but what else is coming our way, right? You're doing groups. Currently, I am finding ways to connect small groups of women in a group called Genie. Um, it's going to be a six-week rotating group where I bring people in and then we do some work. It starts with writing. It's been really neat to see some of the things that have come out in my first group. Mm-hmm. Um, like just having that little mindset, sh- mindset shift 
yeah. and having other women to connect to and to collaborate with just on our own on own lives, you know, especially where we can't go to lunch, we can't go, you know, have a girls night and go get dessert, like we can't right. do that right now. So having these connections, um, you're able to connect with someone who's going through the exact same situation in a completely different state. And yeah, I think that that's really, really cool. Awesome. That is so great. You are a fantastic woman. I love watching you're because you're real. You're beautiful. Yes, you you're funny, but you're real. And I, I just that is so refreshing. So thank you for what you are doing. Okay. Talk to you later. Um, real quick. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was nope. going to say I'm having a new group opening on May 1st. So if Perfect. you're watching this and it's after May 1st, um, I'm going to try and be doing them, uh, opening a new group every first of the month. So there will be an application process um, always listed on my Instagram, and I will link it in my in my um, website as well. So it sounds like Instagram is the best way to find you. That's where I'm the most active. That's where I feel like I can really connect with people. I okay. just really like that connection instead of just putting out a post and going, yes. well, I hope someone reads it. Okay. Check out the stories. Elizabeth's stories are so fun. <laughs> I love them. Thank you so much. You rock, mom Thank jeans. Thank you. You <laughs> rock it too. <laughs> See ya. Bye. I stopped the video. That was fun. You're so, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I stopped recording.